And I said, this is radical, but I don't believe in titles. I think the only title you should have is a fiance. Because fiance if I can't make the decision, no. if I want to be with you the rest of my life, why are we putting titles on it then? All we're doing is saying we're getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. So the title is temporary until I decide I've gotten to know you enough to not want you. Right. Or I do want you, then I'll give you the actual title that matters. But that's besides the point. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> you know what I'm Ooh, saying? I'm going to send this to somebody. Because there's a false, <laughs> there's a false <laughs> sense of security. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? This is Latera Star Whitfield, and welcome to Dear Future Wifey Presents Off the Podcast. Now, Off the Podcast is an opportunity for us to talk about issues and topics that we typically can't get into during our regular episodes. Today's episode will be moderated by Jay Barnett and co moderated by Elsa Marley. And we call this episode What Men Say and What Women Hear. Yeah, this is going to be quite interesting. So, hey, I got to get to work. So let me hop off this camera and jump behind these other cameras. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey presents Off the Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Barnett. And tonight's episode is what he said and what she heard. And tonight we're going to have a conversation around men and women in relationships, how we hear each other, what we think and what are our thoughts. And I'm so excited to be joined tonight by my co-host, Miss Elsa. If you want to introduce yourself to the people, let them know how amazing you are. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elsa Marley, and I am a life coach, mental health counselor. And I'm so excited to be here tonight because it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I am Yancy, and I am a content creator, and I'm very opinionated. <laughs> love it. Love it. Hi, and I'm Greg, and I'm um, a software engineer, and I can't wait for this. Mm -hmm. So, listen, man, this is going to be fun. This is going to be insightful. This is going to be hopefully encouraging. And I think the more we have spaces where men and women can listen, I don't think we listen to each other. I think we do a lot of hearing, but I don't think that we do a lot of listening. And so hopefully you can gain some insight and some new perspectives on just how women hear from what men are saying and also how what men are saying are driving how women think. Y'all got to catch that. So again, I'm your host, Jay Barnett, and I'm so excited about this great discussion. I'm a marriage and family therapist, life coach, author, speaker, but tonight I just want to chill and relax and listen to these great people, share their insight. You might get some clinical stuff from me and Elsa, but you're going to get us. So just for all those people, just give y'all that disclaimer because y'all be looking for free therapy sessions. <laughs> so he wants us to do all the work. <laughs> yeah, so no yeah, I want them to do all the work. No 50% off. I'll interject <laughs> here and there. So I, I want to start with you, Elsa. Elsa, you've been married mm -hmm. and now you're in the dating world. Or I'm not going to say you're on the dating scene. No, I don't date. But, oh. you know, because I, I know your perspective on dating. Mm -hmm. But... How do you see dating now as a divorcee? What, what is that like? And not just from your perspective, but even just from women. What, what, what is your thought about dating now after being married? I think dating now is very transactional. And unfortunately, that does not work. And I think that's part of the reason why we have a lot of issues with relationships. Um, I personally don't date people. I don't have the time and the energy for it. I'm all about courtship and intentionality. And I think it's very important that if someone is interested in a person, that they need to just really pursue them in friendship first and then go ahead and make their intentions known. But nowadays, it's just like we see someone we're attracted to and we want them to be our boyfriend and girlfriend when we have not taken the time to actually get to know the person and really sought out who this person is, like what's their background, what's their history, do they even match like my lifestyle <laughs> do we have the same Ooh, values good, and the good. same goals right and so we end up finding people ending you know entering to these relationships and like we're dating we're together but then and then they get married and then they end up divorced like I did <laughs> so I'm just now a lot more intentional about my relationships and I consider myself a person who wants to be courted not to be dated they, dating is all about collecting data I don't have time for, for, for anyone to connect data on me right now. I need them to actually pursue me and understand who I am and then just, you know, do what they need to do. So. Uh, and that is a wrap. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Thank have you. a great night. And that's the show. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I hope you guys really caught what Elsa just said because intentionality is a word that Elsa and I, because we, you know, we're clinicians and we talk about this is a lot because when you really think about intentionality, it's you've been intentional with how you move. 
It's being strategic. It's being methodical. It's being calculated. And when I'm talking about calculated, because sometimes people make calculated decisions because they want control. It's a calculated that you are factoring in how you want your life to be, what you want the outcome to be. So I really hope you guys really caught that because she dropped a lot <coughs> in that. But Greg, Elsa said something. She said, people don't pursue friendships. Why is that important before entering into the dating world? I think that the friendship is the foundation. It's it that is your relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, they, all the rest of that stuff goes away. You know, you wake up in the morning and and you know, at first you first meet each other, you know, her hair is always done and she's always put together. And you when you're further in the relationship, you wake up and hair is all over the place, no makeup, and, and so do you the person that you get to know and the person that you want to pursue is the person that's inside not the the this image that you, that you were attracted to i think part of the problem is, is that people search and pursue relationship versus connection oh i <clears throat> love that so you pursue an end state i want to be in a relationship i want it to be this i want it to be that versus i want to find a person that connects with me on this level that i can go do the things that i enjoy doing I think a lot of times people try to mold people into what they want versus finding the person that fits Ooh. where they are. Mm -hmm. Man. And, Ooh, and that on. takes some patience right. and it takes some diligence and it takes being willing to identify somebody as the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Say that again, bro. <laughs> it takes somebody to identify somebody as the wrong person. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be, you know what? You don't fit. We're cool. There you we go. can hang out. But where I'm trying to go, what I want to do. Ooh, you're just not there. You, and oh. you might have chemistry, too. Can I add that? Yes. The chemistry is so overrated. So many people, <clears throat> but we had chemistry. You can have chemistry with so many people. That doesn't mean you're compatible. Right. And, and, but see, the compatibility is, is relative it to is. a lot of people. Subjective. It really is. So what's compatible, what, what compatibility means to me may mean something different to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, it, and that's okay because it should be relative. You know, it, it fair exchange is no robbery. They're just saying the fair exchange is no robbery. And it's not about equal exchange. It's about fair. What you value, mm -hmm. what you get for what you value, and what you're giving. Does that person value the same thing or value what you're giving as much as you value what they're giving? Come on. That part. doesn't have to be equal. It has to be fair. And and I'm so important. I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because we we are part of a feminist movement. And in this feminist movement, it's all about equality. And so what happened is, is that, and I'm, and I'm going to go there, and, I, and I'm going to tread carefully because I don't want to, and, and again, hear me with the open mind. I'm all for women being out front, you being leaders, all that different things like that. I don't, I mean, I'm all for that. But what is happening is that when we enter into the relationship, as Greg said, our equal uh, contribution may not look the same. And so what happened is I have to manage my expectations for you to give as I give because we're going to have different love languages. Mm -hmm. And our different love language is going to require us to give something different. But I think the biggest challenge, Elsa, uh, is that we give mm -hmm. to others how we want to be, give, right. yep. be given to. Yeah. And that's where a lot of things go wrong because then we're giving selfishly. If you're giving someone something in order to get the same thing back, then you're being selfish. And that's part of the reason. That's really the main reason why a lot of marriages fail. It's selfishness. Wow. If you look at every single thing, every single reason why there is <coughs> divorce, um, whether it's because infidelity or financial, you know, uh, things, it's all because of selfishness. Somebody, wanted to take care of themselves first before their partner. Mm. And partnership should be about giving. It should be about serving. That's why I don't even like to even call it about connection. I say it's about partnership. Mm -hmm. I look for someone who I can be partners with because you can be equal in that realm and then still have a, the state where the man kind of takes his role, essentially. I'm a traditionalist, so I'm a little bit different than a lot of women nowadays. Um, but I believe that 
I don't know, things need to be seen a little bit different and we're just way too selfish in our relationships nowadays and that's why they fail. So, yeah. I think well, what are your thoughts, Yancy, on that? Even what you're that. bringing to the table when you're talking about knowing what the other person wants, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a bunch, I'll just use salt and pepper, but if you have a ton of salt and I'm bringing salt to the table, it doesn't really feel like I'm bringing anything. Technically, mm -hmm. I am, but you already had salt. You're good on salt. Mm -hmm. So if he brings pepper to the table, you're going to have more interest peaked. And I think that a lot of times we're selfish in what we want to give. Mm -hmm. We want to, you know, <clears throat> pop our collar and say, but I'm bringing salt. Honey, you brought salt to a salt mill. You know, yeah. nobody really cares. And they say, well, you don't value the salt. It's not that we don't value it. I'm good on the salt. And I think that when we really understand and celebrate the differences between men and women, obviously each man is gonna be different, each woman is gonna be different. There are a lot of things that intrinsically men identify with and want. For example, everybody knows men feel pride when they can provide. And so if a woman can also provide, that's great. But he's not going to have his hair blown back, as I like to say. He's not going to be, oh, wow, I can put this down because she's got it. That's not what he's usually looking for. So if a woman does that, she's going to be disappointed because he's not going to get that same reaction. She's not going to get the reaction from him of gratitude the way she would as a woman for a man saying, baby, I got you. I want to take care of everything from here moving forward. So, so I, I want to go to, and I want to go to you, Elsa, because I saw you make some, some, some movements there. <laughs> what, you know what I mean? And so uh, what now, now what are your thoughts on that? You know, honestly, I am very against like a lot of these stereotypical, like while I'm traditional, I'm also against a lot of the stereotypical roles that we assign to men and women. Like, if a man wants to be the man who stays at home and takes care of the children, that's okay. If the woman's providing, I think that too often we make it like the guy provides and he does this and he gets pride in that. And honestly, for me, I'm like, what if the man is really better with the children than the woman is? Right. Yeah, exactly. And so we have to, I, for me, we have to look at the individual. And we have to see, well, what does this person actually bring to the table? And as couples, it's important for us to like really pay attention to our partners and see like, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? What are you good at? Instead of trying to fit each other in these different roles, because when we put each other in these roles, we have these unmet expectations that end up happening. And then our marriages and relationships don't work very well. You were talking about earlier about like um, what men, sh women should bring and so on and so forth. For me personally, I like to ask my partner, what do you actually need? What do you need this morning? What do you need? for me today versus ex thinking that because he's a man he needs sex because he's a man he needs food because he's a man oh, no yeah, I yeah. need to ask you hey babe what do you need for me today what would you like for me to take care of because at the end of the day I don't know what your needs are and I might think that you want me to cook you a good meal but you might just want me to just like rub your back you know and so um too often women and men have these things in their minds about what men and women want and what they need and all this stuff and we miss each other because of that uh, absolutely. Well, we just need to ask questions. And and, and it, it, it goes back to, uh, you know, uh, earlier speaking on your platform, Yancy, and I think, you know, really, again, answering, I mean, asking those tough questions mm -hmm. and doing away with these traditional gender roles. I am so against these roles. And this is why a lot of time I'm so against movements because anytime that you bring in a movement, whether it's a movement to push men, it edges women out. Whether it's a movement to where we want to push the woman, it edges men out. We need each other. If you get nothing else from what Elsa just said, what Yancey would great, we need each other. Our differences are okay. And we have to become okay with embracing the differences and not seeing it as if you're not like me because we want her to hear and understand as men do rather than let me see how she hears. Once I have an understanding, one of the things that we do as clinicians is when you come into our office, we take in the whole person. We're not, I, some, I made a post and somebody says, well, well, Jay, as a therapist, you do judge the issues. I said, we don't judge issues, we assess. But even in assessing, the space is a nurturing space to let me hear all of you. I don't wanna just hear about the depression. Let me hear about your backstory. That kind of gives us this, 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 this information to where we kind of begin to walk this journey with you. And I thought, I think so many times as each of you have, 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 have conveyed, we're so selfish about our wants, our, uh, and this picture that we have painted and we created that I want what I want. I think there's a fine delineation between selfish and I've heard that a lot. I think there's a really fine delineation as far as intention. 
So who you are is who you are. If I love a certain way, that's who I am, and that's how I love. So, but if you, if that's not how you love, then it's on me to understand how it is you love. I'm not selfish in loving the way I love. But at the same point in time, if, I'm, if I want you to feel what I'm trying to express to you, it is on me to understand so I give you something so there is fair exchange. So you feel what it is from what you get, from what I'm, I'm giving you. So I don't think it's selfish at all to, to, to express who you are. Because if you look at it from the perspective, is you are showing me you. Okay, I am showing me you. And it, it's a, that is a progression. I show you levels. Men, a lot less than women. Okay? We are very um, emotional. We, we are, we are, women are a lot more emotionally resilient than men. We are mm-hmm. weak. I agree. Emotionally. Yeah. Very well, weak. It, well, society has done that as well for us. I think, I think, somebody asked, I, I, I had, I very seldom respond to things on on Instagram. And somebody posted something, and, and I'm going to go do my bishop thing real quick. Somebody posted something and asked, can men live without women? Mm-hmm. This is something you just said, Jay. And my response was, we never have had to. So if you go back to the Bible, Adam, God created Adam and Eve, and it says that it was, good, it was not good that man be alone. That does not mean by himself. What that meant was all in one. Mm-hmm. So everything that was man, he was one. Everything he needed, he was a single unit. All of it. That's why the significance of him pulling Eve from him, Adam, yep. which was part of him. So there is not a competition. To your point, it is a... Um, Completion almost. It, not even a... Compl- it is a... Collaboration. Um, thank you. Yeah. Is a collaboration. The very collaboration you had in the beginning, but there takes a different understanding now to first accept we're different because there's different parts of me that were pulled out. Yep. Okay. We're and we're intentionally different. So there's a deficit. And there's nothing wrong with different. Different yep. is fine. Different mm-hmm. is great. But how do we make different work as one? Right. Okay. That that is the thing, and understanding the difference and communicating and and hearing. So I, I hear you. I'm able to feel you so I can function in what you need yeah. versus me functioning here. You, here's what I got. You know, I, I, to your, you, you, said, you, know, you said something earlier. Here's salt. Um, you know, I, I've heard a lot of women say, I know what I bring to the table, but is it what the man needs? Right. And if you, what you bring to the table is not what he needs, Find the one that needs what you're bringing. If that's really exactly. what you want to bring. Exactly. And, and, here, and here's yeah. the thing for the record. It's not the... It's not... <laughs> let me just be clear. Because I think, Elsa, that is what is destroying our perspective culturally, especially through the media, through the music. You read the magazines, and these women are in competition with trying to get snatched. You're trying to lose weight. You're flying to Miami. You're flying to DR to get your body because you think this is what you need to be picked. And let me really bring it home for you, ladies. How a man chooses and how he marries are two different Amen. approaches. Absolutely. Mm. Listen to what I said. How he chooses and how he marries are two different approaches. And so in that, when I talk to guys who are happily married, they don't lead with, man, mm-hmm. my wife a bad chick, bro. Mm-hmm. They lead with something that is an intangible. Yeah. Bro, I got peace. There you go. I chose her because, man, there was peace, man, when I connected with her. And I want to go back to something Elsa was talking about is that when we can do away with all of these social and these societal messages, because man, they're destroying us because on one end, the man who stays home, he gets belittled. He's not a man. He's a stay at home dad, right? The woman who's out again, you choose according to what works for your system. Masculinity is not, Determined or not defined by a role. Mm-mm. 
femininity is not defined by how sexy and how provocative you can be. Please catch that because I see a lot of these feminine movement movements taking place and it's like all sexual and, and some of it's very perverse. Do what you do. But again, I'm bringing truth. That doesn't mean that you're feminine. Being able to have a conversation with a man or woman and really have an understanding that Elsa, you said this, how can I serve you? And when you can create a safe place for a man and woman, you create an opportunity for you both to connect to where you can get what you need, I can get what I need, because sometimes what we're given is not what our partner is in need of. Right. Yeah, Amen. Please. Right. So I want to I want to switch course and and I want to start with either uh, Yancy or Elsa. Do you think that hip hop culture has made a huge impact on how women view themselves, which impacts how they approach men and even how they see themselves in relationships. I think that I would go so far as to say all media. I think that all media sends a message that you need to be picked for one and that your value is in your sexuality. That's what I see when I see media. I see the media saying men, your value is in your wallet and women, your value is in your body, which is why they spend so much money trying to get their body that way and to give up their body sexually. So I definitely see that. Um, it's funny because this is a little bit of a tangent, but it's funny when guys will say uh, they'll brag about how much money they have and the cars and they show off their watches and things like that. We'll be the first to complain that a woman's a gold digger. But that's what you're leading with. Same thing yep. with a woman. She's got her cheeks hanging out. And I don't mean the ones on her face. She's got things pushed up and she's leading with sex, but then is offended when a guy wants to approach her like she's a prostitute. And, you know, it just, this is what we feel our value is. That's what we lead with. So a woman is telling you something about herself if that's what she's leading, what she can do in bed, how she can put it down. If a man leads with, this is what I can afford, this is what I drive, that's how he's valuing himself. And so I think that definitely society media is telling, you know, young men and women, this is what it is. And I would even go so far as to say the uh, movies and things like that, not with the sexuality part, but with children's movies, none of the characters' lives start until they get picked as far as women goes. You wow. know, the story, you never see stories about little boys who their life was just ho-hum and then he met the girl. It's never that. It's the woman kind of, she has no meaning and then the crux of the story is she finds her guy and life begins. So I think that there's so much subtle messaging that's coming across, but definitely, definitely with hip hop, I mean, the messages, you see the guys who are dressed from head to toe and the women's are, women are in like, you know, dental floss. They don't really have a role. They're just there as props. And so psychologically, that, that plays a part. And also, I would say, too, with people who replicate that on social media, like you said, how did you say the people <clears throat> who he chooses is not the same he gets married? In my group, all the time I get asked this. Guys, you say you don't want a caked on face and you don't want the false eyelashes and you don't want this outfit, da-da-da-da, but that's the people you give the love to. And they always say, we're not asking those women to marry us, though. So the women are getting Ooh. the attention, but they're not getting the proposals. And Ooh. that's what people miss. Yeah, she's getting lots of attention, but he's going home to this person or he's picking this person. But that's a classic to, to, to the point of the whole podcast. What he said, what she heard. Mm. Because what he's saying is what she's hearing is what he ch picks. Mm. Okay. And what he, what in, in, in the gentleman you so you spoke of, what he said was, I have peace. He is saying the things that are valuable to him. Right. Okay. Those are, he's, he, these are the things that are valuable to me. And this is why I picked her. And I think a lot of times where it's it, it either it's not communicated or women don't hear that because they're hearing through this filter of I have to be picked. And what gets me picked is all this other stuff. But that without the the being kept, because if I get him to pick me, I can, here comes manipulation, I can force him to keep me. 
Yep. Okay, I can put it down. I can do this. I can stand on my head, spin around, chandeliers, whatever it takes. Yeah, you spin around. Keep- I'm leaving because now <laughs> we need to call a priest for exorcism. Yeah. yeah, like we do not spin around is. on me because I am leaving and I will not return and I will mail you your divorce papers. Oh, okay, wow. okay. You know, yeah. What's interesting is speaking of media, like I don't watch TV much. <laughs> like I literally, I have a television. I probably I tell everyone maybe watch about two to five hours a month of television because I don't have time for messaging that is out there to come into my mind. And I think that too often we don't guard our gates. We have eye gates, ear gates, all sorts of stuff. And we, we wonder why we're so jacked up and why we cannot get the things that we actually want in life. I don't have time to watch media. So when we have conversations about things like women want their butt like this, and I'm like, I don't want none of that (laughs) because I know that those are things that are just, they're, they're, they're fleeting. They're going to vanish. And if I want a man who's going to actually come home to a woman who knows how to cook, knows how to take care of kids, knows how to run three businesses, and is actually like pretty freaking amazing, I'm not going to sit there and be chasing after the, th- the things that a lot of women chase nowadays. And so it's very important for me to help women to understand that they need to be so much more than their looks, right? Yes. They need to be so much more than what people, you know, choose on social media. And I'm an influencer and I'm going on the beach and I've got my bathing suit on. Great. You you looked really good for the man who is addicted to porn, but you did not look good for the man who actually wants a woman who's going to take care of the kids at home. And he wants a wife. All day, right? right? And he wants a wife. And so um, it's very important for us to really, really be mindful about what we're really taking in. Yes. Because what we take in literally directs the messages that we hear yeah. in our head. It directs the way we act towards each other. It directs the way we perceive ourselves. And I, at the end of the day, for me, I don't have time for the media to tell me about who I am. <laughs> I want to know what God thinks about who I am. And then what I feel that I was created to be. So, yeah. I think the media has an influence, but I think things in our lives happen before that. Um, in our childhood, mm-hmm. how we're loved, what that reflects like, what I should look for. You know, somebody told me one time we were, we were talking and um, they said, you know, women, girls ref- with their fathers reflect the love that they the father gives them. So if you've never had that love and you've had pain and you've had hurt and you've had disrespect and yet, what are you going to reflect? What are you going to project back? Mm-hmm. That's where you start with. Okay. Until you get past that until somebody can actually, so you can actually hear somebody. I'm trying to understand you to love you. Yeah. I'm trying to understand you to be able to get, because they have to get through that. Guys don't about guys pick a wife, and 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 I'll be just totally candid by the same thing that that women do. This picture, this envisioning, men do. Mm-hmm. Yep, I can see her if I have to go to an event on my arm. I can see her if I, she's talking to my boss's wife. Right and. Being and handling, being able to hand herself. You're not scared to leave her we alone. We pick that. <laughs> yep. We we look for mm-hmm. that. Those are re- things we pick. And if I can't take you across the street, you're you're you you go to we go to a restaurant and you're cussing the the right. waitress out because she was slow with the food. I know I can't take you any further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You you have created this yourself. No matter how you look. No matter what you have on or don't have on. You're not taking you to the HOA meeting. Hey, this ain't it. (laughs) Can I actually add that? I want (laughs) to piggyback on what Elsa was saying. Um, I think that, you know, we throw around terms a lot like self-love and being healthy and all that. And for the most of us, I think I know the least about your story. And I've heard somewhat just from what you've said. We've been on a journey. We've done healing. You guys have had actual educational background specifically in that area. I went through the School of Hard Knocks just having to learn on my own and then researching, uh, but not for a degree or anything like that. But it took years to get to the place where I loved myself. I heard those terms and you think self-love, well, yeah, who hates themselves? No one's going to physically harm themselves or make yourself go last. We hear those terms, but my heart goes out to the person who doesn't understand how to love themselves because if you want to say, okay, I want to love myself and I don't want to be this person who has to dress away to get a, get a guy. It's actually scary for the person who's not getting attention. If you're going for six months and you're not getting asked out, if your page is not getting likes, 
Even a very strong person is going to feel a way if they don't have that internal love because our validation a lot of times is subconsciously told to us it's being picked. And so I think it's really helpful for people to learn how to love themselves and to, I call it getting a life. You know, I'm not trying to be funny, but literally getting a life because if you don't have a life, you're going to be waiting for that guy to come for your life to begin. And so, you know, you had mentioned having three businesses when you have businesses, you don't have a lot of downtime. So you're not sitting around bored and wondering why you're not getting picked and who's picking me. But I think that's the crucial thing is that a lot of times people don't know how to get to that place where their value isn't in their body, their value isn't in their wallet. It takes a lot of work to learn how to love yourself and be okay being alone. Yeah, and I think too, you know, when, when, you, when you look at this and when you talk about, you know, what he said, what she heard, Going back to what you said, Greg, a lot of it's associated and attached to what did you hear as a child, mm -hmm. right? And many times, so many adults, men and women, are hearing and speaking according to childhood experiences that they've had either with their parent or the, or the experience that they didn't get to have with a parent. And when you really think about where we are right now uh, in our society and culture, we're at a very, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very scary place that we're in. Um, I've heard one pastor talk about the place of decadence and just where there's just, uh, there's no meaning to anything. Nothing means nothing. Um, marriages are falling apart. And I don't think that marriages fall apart because marriage doesn't work. We have people in marriages that either don't want to do the work they came uh, into the marriage with these unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. And then they also brought who they were in their singleness mm -hmm. and tried Ooh. to live that through a marriage state. Mm -hmm. and, it, yeah. and these challenges create so many issues. And this is why I think that therapy, and, and I'll be honest with you black people, we have a long way to go. We haven't even scratched the surface. Me and Elsa talk about this. I actually talked to a good friend of mine who is uh, a psychiatrist in Beverly Hills, and, and we were just having this discussion the other day, uh, a black male psychiatrist, and he was just saying, man, sometimes, you know, when we look at it that we're just now scratching the surface to even just talk about mental health. And as you, you, you said, Yancy, this is a journey, and I love social media. I think it's been great for my platform. It's been great for me to meet people like Elsa, uh, uh, individuals uh, um, like Yancy. I knew Greg before social media, but it's allowed me to expand my message and grow uh, my platform to reach people. But it's the impact that it's had on so many people's perception of the reality mm -hmm. to what you said. It takes work to heal it's not in a post mm -hmm. it's just because you're posting healing doesn't mean it's going to heal you right. it's mm -hmm. in deep rooted work i mean it's pulling up this stuff and uprooting it because until you do that all of your relationships are going to look the same they're going to be superficial mm -hmm. and they're going to be superficial and it's going to be based on what are you getting from it rather than what yep. you bring what to you it bring to it and I think when we get to that place as men and women to have an understanding, because here's what's happening. There's a lot of finger pointing rather than saying, OK, how can I become a better man? And, and if we stop this, this and church does it uh, mm -hmm. and I, you see it all the time. It's like we have to stop pushing this message, preparing people to be a wife, prepare these women to be women, <laughs> prepare these men to be men. Because when you are preparing somebody to be a wife, or you're preparing them for a role. Right. Yep. And then they have to act that out the rest of their life. Exactly. exactly. After a while, you get tired of acting. Exactly. <laughs> you, Will comes out. Again, you're, you, and, and, and to your point, Elsa, you're trying to prepare a man to be a husband who has a porn addiction. You pray over him and you tell him, go be married. And you go marry this woman who's, oh, my God, I found my Boaz. But then your Boaz is in their own porn hub. Is he Boaz now or is he pastor? He got, I caught him. But again, no mm -hmm. one is really working with the whole person. Right. We're all sending these people out to, as you said earlier, we're going to insert them into this role. Mm -hmm. 
Man is out here like, man, I got to get the bag. I got to get the bag. I got to get the money. I got to get the money. And he's doing no self-development on himself. Mm-hmm. He's not go. building his character. He's not working on his integrity. No mm-hmm. discipline. He's not working on his discipline. Right? The woman is like, man, I just got to be the baddest. I just got to get this. I just got to look like this because I'll get picked. And she's not understanding the value is not in the external. Mm-mm. That's great. But what do you bring to a relationship? And notice, um, you know, I have this thing when I sit down with couples. The marriage in a relationship is not the same. The relation, Your relationship is going to determine the experience in your marriage. If your relationship is unstable, your marriage is unstable. And most people are unstable in their relationship and they're frustrated in their marriage. And until they figure out how do we fix the relationship, you won't fix the marriage. But they'll start working on the marriage because the marriage is this it's this image that you're presenting. We've really made marriage an idol at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Like at the end of the day, if we just stop idolizing marriage, we'll oh be my okay. God. It's like a yes. Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> it's so silly oh because God. back in the day, like, you know, you got married really because you had a purpose to fulfill because for God, right? It was, and you had a role and legacy to kind of uphold in your family. And now it's like, we get married because it's this thing that if you, like you like said earlier, simple. you know, we get married because wow, we're chosen now. And it's like, no, like stop making marriage an idol. Um, if we stop making marriage an idol, more less people will get married and we won't have 47% divorce rate, you know? Um, because people are getting married, they're unprepared. They don't even know what it means to actually be sacrificially loving to Ooh, your partner. Yes. They don't know what it means to actually care for a person because they don't even know how to care for themselves. And so how do you tell a baby to go and like essentially try to eat meat when they can't even chew like a ba- like uh, some basic meat? You gotta really, you gotta prepare people to truly understand that marriage is really not like the best thing ever. It's not the prize. I'm so sick of hearing people, you know, I, I'm the prize. I'm the prize. You're not the prize. You need to go work on your healing. Go, go, go to therapy and stay there for yes. a long time. Exactly. <laughs> and you need to really, <laughs> really real. be just be in therapy. Sit, sit there. Sit no, just... Literally, people need to sit there because I see these people who come and I, I'll watch people come to my office. Oh, I want to get, you know, premarital counseling. I'm going, y'all are not going to make it more than six months. And I don't say that to my clients, but I go, you are both unstable. Yeah. And you're trying to bring two empty people and try to make a hole. And what happens That's is you right really there. make a hole. Yeah. There is a literal hole within the relationship because you're trying to do something that you both are not capable of doing because you've not done the work with each other yeah. nope. and so nope. it's so important for us to make sure that we are whole human beings before we go into these relationships that's why again I tell people I don't date I know who I am and so I spend time getting to know a person I don't t- I don't oh my god because he's he would be perfect from no 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 I'm gonna sit right here and the minute that I realize the person is not for me we do sis. We peace out. And I, I will grab you talking earlier about like, um, I, I don't remember exactly the, 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 uh, the way you put it, but I am that type of person who, if a person does not work out for me and if I see that you're perfect for one of my homegirls, I will introduce you to one of my homegirls. My friends are like, Elsa, you're crazy. You just dated him. Why would you? Because he's not good for me, but he might be perfect for her. And why would I rob my friend of something that is going to be beautiful and, and amazing if this guy is great, if they would be great for each other? I know what I want and I know who I am. So I'm not going to go beyond, like, you know, the things that I actually expect yeah. and, I, and I need in a relationship. So Going back to what you said, Greg, um, what, what Elsa just said, what, what did you say earlier? It, it's being okay with it not being a wrong choice or right choice. What do you yeah, say? it's being okay with making the wrong of choosing this person is not for you. Mm-hmm. And you have to be okay with that. Letting him go. You know, and, and, and it's, it's not even a let go. I mean, from, from the standpoint of, we always say let go like it, it is a loss. <laughs> okay? It's no loss. Mm. Okay? It's actually a gain. Yeah. So to make a decision that is the best for you, is a gain, not a loss, but it's a matter of perspective. How do you look at it? Do I see it as a loss? You know, one of the things else you just said about the, about the, and Jay, about the marriage and, and what came to mind is, is the relationship is like a partnership and, and, and how, and the product of that partnership is the marriage. Mm. Okay. How you work together is what produces the, is the outcome. The marriage is the outcome. Yep. So, if you focus on the relationship, you can produce what it is you're looking to build. So it's like having a, a business. You can there be two go. partners. You can do whatever you need to do. You don't have to like each other. 
you have to be able to work together. But what happens in that dynamic, you get to understand each other. I understand how he works. I understand. And because there's no emotion in it and it's, it's the purpose is to build the business. You have an objective perspective so you can go through and make decisions that are right for the business mm -hmm. yeah. that may not yes. serve me individually. There you go. Individually. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now if I go into the the, in a marriage, looking at the relationship with a target, for what the objective is, I can actually build it. And now I have exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. Woo. You and I talked about this. Somebody asked me what I was looking for in a relationship. And we went through a whole <laughs> list. I feel sorry for this woman. <laughs> Greg gave her a, dissert uh, a dissertation. Okay. <laughs> he was ready for a doctorate. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. And, and, and it, it is definitely, I know exactly to your, I know exactly what I need. I know what works for me. And so peace is a, is a main thing. And I, if I know I can give myself peace, why would I add that disruption? Part. There you go. <laughs> why would I add something just yes. to, just, okay, I just got somebody else here. Yes. Just to have that. Listen. If I, yeah. When and, she's, oh, go ahead, go ahead. And so, and so, in, seven so said that, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's just simple, knowing what it is you want. Yeah. And being okay to wait for it. Mm -hmm. There you go. There it is, yeah. right That's there. Right. And say I that again, Greg. Just be Hold okay on. to wait for it. Say it again. It. Not, say it again. Give me one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talk about we're not settling, we're not settling. We settle all the time. Because we're not willing to take the risk of, quote unquote, not having it. And there may not be a risk. Maybe not having what's available is the thing you should have. Come on. <laughs> Ooh. <Yeah. laughs> Bars. <laughs> <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Because so, what's available is not always what's best. Man, there it is. Right. Listen, so. what's permissible? What? Uh, what? <laughs> burr, 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 burr. <laughs> told y'all I'm a DJ in, in my other life. DJ what's Barnett. up? What's up? What's up? Burr, 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 burr. Right y'all see? I was gonna say when she was talking about two um, pe people who are not whole coming together making a whole. Yeah. Um, I see that a lot. I'll see you when somebody is complaining about a relationship and I can hear it. Okay, this is why. And what happens is a person is, let's just say I'm missing a body part. We'll just say as a person not being whole. Let's say I'm missing an arm and I'm coming to you. I want that extra arm. And the thing is, is that we have, this is not the best analogy, but we have to be able to figure out how to get that arm for ourselves. And so what happens is I'm resentful because you're not giving me what I want. And I think when you get to the point where you don't need from that person and what you spoke of was the biblical model which sounds wild. I always say to people, a relationship is servitude. It literally is servitude. Yep. And if you understand this, people will be running from marriage. They will not be signing mm -hmm. up for it, but they think that it's security. And you, you mentioned not dating. I did a video called dating without titles. And I said, this is radical, but I don't believe in titles. I think the only title you should have is a fiance, because fiance if I can't make the decision, no. if I want to be with you the rest of my life, why are we putting titles on it then? All we're doing is saying we're getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. So the title is temporary until I decide I've gotten to know you enough to not want you. Right. Or I do want you, then I'll give you the actual title that matters. But that's besides the point. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> you know what I'm Ooh, saying? I'm going to send this to somebody. Because there's a false, <laughs> there's a false <laughs> sense of security. <laughs> <laughs> There's a false sense of security that comes with boyfriend title. One of you asked me earlier today, why are people such a, no, somebody else asked me before this taping, why are people, women especially, such a rush to get the, the title? Uh, a lot of times people want to go slow and be friends. It's because there feels like a sense of security, but it's a false sense of security because you say, well, if I'm in a relationship, you can't cheat. We're saying the per person's a person of character. Okay. All right. But yes, let's say if you're faithful to the relationship and you respect the title, he could meet you tomorrow and tonight break up with me. He technically didn't cheat. He ended it and started with you. Exactly. But the result is that he's not with me and he's with someone else. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't any security even with the title. Nope. You just Come have on. the right. respect in that moment. Come on, please. So, <laughs> I think oh. that what people, <laughs> what people need to realize is that when you get married, it's saying, I care enough about you and that ultimate goal that we're both striving for that I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to blow your hair back. Come on. And I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you pick diligently, 
you're going to pick a partner who also has that same goal. Exactly. Yeah. But Ooh. we're not looking in the rear view window going, well, what did she do for me today? What did she do? We're just doing it naturally. Exactly. And it's coming. Bars. There you go. Bars. That right Bars. there. Comes, Bars. That right there. It comes Man. from what you said earlier about learning who that is and how do you get <sighs> yeah. that person. Man. What, it is, what it is that blows their hair back. And if you care about somebody, that's your objective. I'll, You're looking to do that. I ain't got no hair. Under, that's back. the goal. Under, that's your goal. Yeah. Because you, what you do understand is what gets built from that. Yes. Right. Okay. You understand. Now, now, now y'all warm This is built. how I get here. <laughs> okay. This is how I get here. You know the same thing that 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 you know it's and it's not manipulative. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it, but there there are certain things that get you to a certain. It's point, common sense, and that's just yes. and then that's just it. You want it to you grow, know? you water that thing. Exactly, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. It's it's not manipulative. I want to I want to raise at work. I have to go show yes. that I deserve this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there there's there's cause and effect. Yes. Okay? Right. So that is realistic, and that and and that's that's going to exist. So you can't look at it. It it comes, and I keep saying this perspective. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? How do you see that? Because how you see that will be how you process it, mm -hmm. right. and it'll be how you respond to it, mm -hmm. and whether it is ex whether it is received, how you receive it, and how the other person sees you receive it, and that is going to determine whether it continues. Mm -hmm. Because men will stop with a quickness if they don't feel that what they give is valued. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Said it again. We they, can marinate on that point. They men, <laughs> men will stop. I'll, I'll, yes. Men will stop, stop if they see what they give is not valued. And we have to speak on it. I, I, this was actually one of the things I want to talk about with you. Is I want us, and I, I know women, we tend to do it a lot, but j people in general. Like, if you have bad service, more people will speak up when they have bad service. And we do it in relationships. Yep. You could be doing amazing Monday through Friday. But Saturday, you messed up. Most people speak about that mess up. Yep. As opposed to saying Monday, oh, you killed it today. Exactly. Yep. Tuesday, oh, you killed it today. Well, if I had done that, we got five days of pats on the back. You can take with stride the little comment on Saturday. Yep. But when you only critique, and men are so sensitive. They look, and this is what I've learned yep. from my, my, my interviews with guys. Guys, I've been doing this six years. Men are like little puppies and they want that little bone. They want that pat on the head and they work and they work and they bust their ass. They don't care about busting their ass mm -hmm. and their sore muscles and working long hours as long as they get an attaboy. Yep. And when you don't give them the attaboy and you do the opposite and you give the, but you forgot the such. It's I don't give you the whole so, moon and the stars, but and, I forgot and the and one. Gonna, and, hold your breath. And, and, and I'm going to support. <laughs> and I'm going to support Young C, Young C on that because John Wooten. Rest his soul, coach, I don't know how many NBA players. Ooh. And he wrote a book, go get this book called Pyramid to Success. This is what I use when I'm working with men. I've actually, I was working with some brother yesterday who never wanted to do therapy and his wife brought him in on the session. And he literally was like, bro, this was all right, man. <laughs> he was like, this is cool, bro. It's not scary. And, and I'm going to tell you why. They asked John Wooden, how did you coach all of these guys? I think he coached Will Chamberlain, yep. all those guys at UCLA. And he said all these guys who had these major egos because they were all talented mm -hmm. athletes. He said, before I corrected any mistake they made, I gave them four affirmations. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you four positive affirmation, and then when I tell you that's so true, because I want to shift it to a biblical perspective really quick. When think about when God said that we're made in the image of him, how does God Ooh, operate true. and how does he move from what praise? Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave it there. Cause this ain't church <laughs> service, <laughs> but it's praise. And, and, and the praise is not what you think it is. It's like, because sometimes you think praise is like, I ain't finna be telling him every time he do yeah. something good. No. no. Sometimes the praise is just, I see you. Right. Yep. Yes. Yep. I see Brother Letera's over there shaking his head, and, and he look like that's hitting him deep in his spirit. Mm. But that's, that's <laughs> yeah. the thing, is I see Acknowledgement. You. It's acknowledgement, yeah. man. And that goes a long it way. It's so mm -hmm. powerful. It's so powerful, At man. work, too, because I had a boss where I would work my butt off. 
And the only time he'd comment is if I messed up. But if you actually sat him down, he'd say, oh, she's one of my best workers. She kills it. She does. But he would never say it. I'm like, would it kill you to come in one day and just say, you freaking nailing it every day? You know, we, we want that in every aspect as humans. And so in that well, same context is it's got to be okay to give that in a relationship because it's, it's, it's got to be what is more important, okay? Your pride, your ego, or the mm. relationship. Discover, uncover, recover love with the new Dear Future collection. The journey starts from within. Let your inner thoughts find freedom on the pages of this richly hued Dear Future Blue Sapphire Edition Genuine Leather Journal. It features a cross-stitched spine and luxurious cording to bind your deepest insights. A great accompaniment is the Dear Future Luxury Bamboo Fountain Pen. There's nothing more intentional than the writing process of a fountain pen. This is an elegant writing work of art. Join the thriving community of fountain pen enthusiasts and purchase one today. These exclusive items and more are available at dearfuturewifey.com. What, what, what is the focus? What is the most important thing? So if, if, if I know that, Hey, somebody I'm with, Hey, you, I know you had a hard day and, but you know, this, you haven't washed, you, 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 you're supposed to wash the dishes. You're supposed to wash your clothes. You're supposed to do all this other stuff. And it didn't get done. If I make sure that I talk about all the stuff you've done. Oh, and so, you know what, baby, when you get a chance, I really appreciate when you do this. Or to your point, if you tell a man, if you explain women, a lot of women want to always, I need to tell him what he needs to do, how he needs to do it, this, <laughs> that, and the other. Versus, you know what? I really like it when you do this. Yes. A man will drop everything and it will stay consistent. Or catch him in the moment doing it. You will. Yep, yeah. You know, I love it when you do this. It makes me feel like this when you do this. Mm -hmm. He will remember it. Yep. He will continue to do it because, and you didn't ask for it. Yep. You just told him what it was and he's going to move in it. Any man who cares about you is listening yes. for yes. those things. Yes. Behavior rewarded is be behavior reinforced. And they can't reinforced. read your mind. <laughs> Can I say, so I have a little bit of a different perspective for this, okay? And I just feel that, on, honestly, in our culture, we are creating people who need praise from others in order to be okay. And I think that it's okay to be okay without a person or needing validation from somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think that in relationships, because I, I think about the partnerships where the person never got validated, so they don't know how to give that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so now the partner's waiting all this time for, for their, their spouse to say something nice to them and they're never going to get it because they just don't know how to do that yeah. and so at the end of the day we cannot create a society where we almost need our partners to validate us and tell us like that we're okay oh good job you did so and, and i'm a Words of affirmation is my love language, my number one love language. So I'm all about affirming people, giving them whatever they need, understanding what their needs are. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to wait for my partner to validate me for me to be okay. I'm going to be okay by myself because here's the thing. In most relationships, if your partner is going to work and they are having a hard time, they are dealing with a lot of stuff, they've just got so much going on, they might not be able to give you what you need. And so you might want them oh, to yeah, come yeah, home yeah. And, and you might want them to be like, good job for making dinner, babe. Good job for taking care of the kids. And they might just overlook that because your day was hard. And you might think that they don't oh, care yeah, about yeah, you yeah, no, when I, at the I, end of the day, agree. they're no, just no. kind of like, I'm just tired. But, no, but, and I, too, I, often, too often, a lot of couples are waiting for their partner to be the source of their happiness and the source of that, their validation mm -hmm. when they need to just be okay by themselves because at the end of the day, you're not always going to get all that love from your partner. No, that's true, yeah. but I think I think there's a, but there's a difference. There's right. a difference in in getting what you need from the relationship mm -hmm. versus being affirm, affirmed. Okay, there's 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 a difference. I don't. I may not. If I, there's something I need from the relationship that I and I can tell you, you know, oh you, I I don't know why you don't do this anymore, or I can say, you know what, I really like when you did this. Yeah, like the, you get more flies with honey. It, that exactly. Yeah. The mm -hmm. purpose of it is for what I need to continue. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. 
that is not an that is not an affirmation that I need to. I feel like I need to hold because you because you're doing it from a. I, I want to make this clarity clarification. You're speaking to the person receiving, and what he if he was speaking to a person, he's speaking to the person giving. So they're exactly. saying exactly if you're struggling with him not giving you this, try this honey instead of this vinegar. And you're saying you're speaking to the person receiving it, saying, mm -hmm. but if he doesn't, you should still be good. Exactly. So I think we're speaking to the. The opposite yeah. spot, yeah. Because I'm going to show up regardless, because that's exactly. just who I am. Right, right. Whether you add a boy me or not, I'm going to exactly. show up, baby. But if you want to get and more more out of them, yeah. exactly. here's yeah. a little tidbit. So, and, 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 and most women, if they are, are looking for a man that is secure in himself, they know they don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. They chose that, okay? They looked for that. So, that, but that doesn't mean you don't do it. Right, mm -hmm. okay? absolutely, right. yeah. So it doesn't mean it's not needed. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Because what that happens in the difference is, is I may not need it in a general sense. Right. But I need it from you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, and, and there's a difference it, and it, 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 it is more of an intimate thing than sex is very much more an intimate thing because that is what helps solidify and yeah. build on top of the relationship. Mm -hmm. That is what helps to build a foundation for me to be able to move forward. That is what helps it me from wake up in the morning yeah. when I'm looked at you yeah. in the middle of the night and want, want to put a pillow over your face yeah. because you've pissed me off. That's like saying because you should. <laughs> I would that's like saying about some relationships where we want no. to do that to our partner. <laughs> so, listen, guys, this 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 has been amazing. We could go on and on, as y'all know. Relationship talk always like go on and on, but I want to give everyone an opportunity to give about ninety seconds of just encouraging words. Uh, affirming words, whatever it is that you, you know you want to leave the viewers with as we close out. And I want to start with you, Yancey, and Elsa, and then we finish with Greg. Okay. Um, what I would want to say is uh, life is, is so rich, and I think that so many people um, are short-sighted. They think that the fullness comes from a partner. The fullness comes from sex. The fullness comes from a work or fame or things like that. To me, my understanding from my experiences on this earth is that the fullness comes from walking in your purpose because we were all designed for a purpose. And so when you focus on yourself, you learn to love yourself and you find your purpose, your purpose to me is something that you do well that also serves others in the process. To me, that is where you find that sweet spot. So if more of us looked for our purpose and began to serve, everything else will fall into place. And if a spouse is what you want, that will come along the way. But don't search for the byproducts. Search for the purpose and everything else will come along. Oh, nice. Love it. Um, I would say that learn to master solitude and learn to master self-love. And not self-love in a grandiose way, but in a way that says that I am secure with me by myself without anybody else. And then when a person is able to come into your life, it becomes this bonus that you really get to like lavish your love on them because now there's an addition to whatever equation you have going on. I think that too often we are waiting to, to become some sort of addition into somebody else's life that when we're not quite even ready to do that. Mm. And I think that if we get to really learn how to understand ourselves by ourselves with ourselves sit with ourselves sit in our pain sit in our our muck and really get a chance to truly heal and experience who we are and we get to know our needs we will be able to better serve people in a relationship and be and show mm -hmm. up healthier in a relationship too often we don't even know what we need and we think that we're going to go get somebody else to come and tell us what we need to make us whatever it is that we're going to be Church. and so it's so important guys to learn to sit in solitude when you sit in solitude you're going to go yeah that's not the type of that's not the guy or the girl that i want and when they show up you go yeah that's exactly what i needed right there so Sit in solitude, Ooh. love yourself, Listen. and let the person come and be an addition to your equation. Yeah, I hope y'all taking notes because <laughs> Yancy and Elsa just killed it. Purpose, self-love, solitude. What you got, Greg? I got perspective. Um, one of the things that we do, and, and we get down on ourselves and we get to, about poor decisions, it, it's a process. Mm -hmm. You know, everything we go through is a process, and how you look at it, and what you do for it and, and will determine whether you get there and whether you get through your process. 
you know, everything happens for a purpose for you to learn something from it. Take that perspective. What did I get from this? What should I learn from this? What can I take from this? What do I move forward from this? Things that we talk about, you know, hurts, pains, heartaches. There's a reason. And you learn something from it every yeah. situation, which is, is and, and it's necessary. You take a butterfly and it, a butterfly, it is necessary for it to go, to, for it to come out of the cocoon on its own mm -hmm. with no assistance or it will not survive. Mm -hmm. That struggle is necessary for survival. So to have what you need, your struggle is necessary, but it also necessary to your, both your point is to take what from that to heal yourself, to have, to sit in your muck and look at what did I get from this? How did I grow from this? What's the perspective I look on this? How do I then take what I've gone through and move forward with this new perspective mm -hmm. and, and take all of that and, and achieve what you're looking for, mm -hmm. whatever that is, whether it's sitting on your, by yourself whether it is in being in a relationship, whether it is a marriage, which is entirely different, mm -hmm. whatever that is, mm -hmm. your, your process, the things you've gone in life are the things that are helping you to get there. So, so true. embrace them. So, true. so you heard it. You got purpose, solitude, and perspective. And I'm going to close with this. Healing is a journey and wholeness is the destination. Be patient with yourself, man. And listen, I encourage each of you, if you haven't gone to therapy, you haven't gone to counseling, please do so. Because I'll, I will tell you this, and Elsa and I, we get to sit with people on a day-to-day -day basis to, to help guide them through the process, to help them foster into these different spaces. And many times people think it's a, you know, a, a, a one-time thing. But sometimes, man, you got to really sit in this stuff and work through it so you can come out on the other side of it and have a healthy perspective and a healthier version of yourself. Because many times our experiences have shaped our belief system mm -hmm. and your belief system creates your patterns and your patterns forms your habits. Mm -hmm. So do the work. And again, this has been great to have this conversation. I told y'all I had some amazing people like they came and, and, and shut it down tonight. But again, this is what he said and what she heard. And this has been a Dear Future Wifey production. Thank you to our brother Latarius for allowing hey. us to be on this platform. Again, Dear Future Wifey presents off the podcast. And I'm Jay Barnett, beautiful co-host here, Miss Elsa. Thank you. And as Russell Simmons says, God bless and good night. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dear Future Wife Presents on the podcast. Uh, if you have a subject matter that you want us to talk about in a future episode, hey, leave a comment down below. I'll make sure that I take a look at it and hopefully your subject matter or topic can be discussed in the upcoming episode. Hey, make sure you subscribe, stop shacking up with us and subscribe and share this video with all your friends and family. God bless. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.